<laughs> All right, so let's take a look at how we can change our color. Our gradient map is, um, again, this, this is one of the cooler nodes in my opinion. This map will actually take a grayscale and convert it into a color. And I'm going to take the height map from this bevel node and I'm going to plug it into my gradient map. Again, if I've got the node highlighted and I come down to the bottom of this information page, there's a thing called gradient editor. And I'm going to click on that and I get the full gradient editor. This right here is just a window on here. So you can, once you've got your colors picked out, you can actually adjust them from out here. Okay. So we'll start simple and then we'll, we'll take a look at some of the more complex things that we can do with this. If I click on the actual gradient, it starts out with two points. I've got my black here and I've got my white here. And what this node does is it gives you the ability to map any RGB color onto any point on this gradient. So if I've got this black one here highlighted, that's my dark, so this corresponds to pure black. And then as I move up this scale, ever so slightly, incrementally, the color is getting lighter and lighter, or the, the tone rather is getting lighter and lighter and lighter. With this one highlighted, I can change what I assign to the black value. So when I plug in my grayscale, whatever is black will now read as red. And then it will fade into white up there. So we've just replaced that gradient. Instead of black, we have red. If I click at any point along this gradient, it'll give me a point with exactly that color. And I can move that down. And as I do so, I've got less of a gradient. So that line sharpens up. I can do it from the other direction too, and I can end up with like a razor thin line, although we're at the wrong spot. We have to be much closer to down here. If I bring it all the way down to the end, and if I bring this in really close, there's, well, there's no, there's no black left, so I don't really see that. Okay. I'm going to have to bring this red to correspond to wherever the point of gray is where that starts. So as I bring this up, there you go. There's that sharp edge. So it's corresponding to a point on this gray scale in here. So that's pure black at the very bottom there, but what we did was we dragged, I could just as easily make this black. So if I click on this again, if I click on that, it, you, it turns blue. Uh, if I've got that clicked, I can move this color back to black and that line becomes black. But this pink remains. And if I move, continue moving it up, it's just gonna get thicker and thicker and thicker because it this black is taking up that grayscale in there and it comes back to grayscale so you know we can we can hand pick any kind of color that we want and change that out i can also just keep making new ones and changing the colors and you know that that's a you so you that can get as complicated or as simple as you want it to be let's find something a little bit better so, you know, for now we can, we can use it just like this. We can also pick a color. So I can pick any color anywhere on my screen and whatever I have highlighted blue here will go into there. The other thing we can do is super cool. I'm going to go into Google Images and let's get brick. And we've got a bunch of different brick colors. So that looks pretty nice. There's a tool in here called Pick Gradient. So rather than just a solid color picker, which 
you know, I could pick like one color off of here. Pick gradient will pick a whole gradient for me. So wherever I draw this line, it's going to pick up whatever colors it finds along that line and it's going to create a gradient. So I can keep doing this. You know, if I draw over an area where it's more or less the same color, I get a nice simple gradient. If I draw over an area that's got a bunch of different colors, it's going to give me like a bajillion points in here. And if you do get a bajillion points in here, you can always kind of lower down the number. This precision slider here will lower down the number of points that you have. But it's only relative to like what you picked up in the first place. So if you picked up literally like a bajillion points, it's not going to really help you much. So I try to pick an area that's more or less limited. You know, and here it actually makes a difference. You can also manually get rid of them. You can just pick up a bunch and just hit the delete key and get rid of them that way. And you can also clear all. <laughs> um, so we have that. Uh, invert positions, you can flip them. You can take what you've picked here and actually desaturate it so that it's just going to pick up the tonal values of whatever you got. So, you know, it's this in grayscale. I'm not sure what interpolate does. I'm, I, I've never used that one. Um, if we highlight one of these guys, now this stuff deals with that specific color point right here. So these are more general, you know, they deal with the entire editor well, the entire gradient, rather. And these guys in here deal with each point. So if you don't have a point selected, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I think it's like this. If you don't have a point selected, this is grayed out. But the second you select one of those points, it's for that point that this information is. So you can actually just turn that single point to gray. Uh, you can also hit Control-Z and get out of it. You can copy this color and then highlight any other point and then paste that color into that point. Um, oh yeah, that's just um, how you want this information displayed. And that's it. But I think that's a pretty big it. I think that's a pretty nice tool. I like to use it a lot. It takes a bit of practice to... Um, really get good at it but it's worth it and especially if you do stylized materials it's um it's great because you can you can put lines in things so you can take a like a something like this and start adding lines and you can make some pretty nice colors with it um in the meanwhile i'm just gonna do i don't like these pinks at all i'm gonna go back to our handmade gradient here because i think for this particular example it's gonna be better for us I am going to bring this up here. I'm going to make another point here, and I'm going to make that black there. I think that's good enough for that. And I can close out of that, and I've got this very simple color. And let's just maximize that because we don't need that web page anymore. So we've made this nice little color here, but that's not all you can do with a gradient map. Because we have the power to assign uh, any color we want, that can include black or white. And gradient maps are also really good at making masks. So because I have this grayscale information, I can reassign colors. So if I want to make, uh, well, I can do a couple of them here. Uh, you know what? Let's just to make it easier to uh, see this as an exercise, I'm going to come back into the bevel and I'm going to give us a little bit more room to fool around with. Bring this number down a little bit. You know what? Let's see what happens if we bring it into the negative and do these weird things instead. And we can we can always come back in here and make these numbers a little bit smaller. It's kind of cool too. Yeah, it fills it out a little bit better. All right. I mean, fool around with it how you want. I'm not going to worry about it too much. But I've got, you know, like I, I wanted a big, nice big black band into there. So that'll work. 
because what we can do now is we can make masks that will mask out exactly what we want. So I've got my bevel plugged into the gradient map. I'm going to go back into this gradient editor. I'm going to click on here. And let's say I just want a mask that's just going to give me the this bevel. So, you know, I've got the top, I've got this, and I just, I, I really just want to mask out just that edge. So what I can do, you know what, I'm going to get a, a second one of each of these. I'm trying to think of the best way of doing this. Okay. I want this business in here to be white because that's basically um, where that is. But I'm also going to grab, I'm just going to click on here, make a second one. I'm going to put it up there. Well, let's do it the other way just so we can practice. So I can highlight this. I can copy. I can put it here. And then I can, this one is now highlighted. I can paste. So I've got now a bracket. So I've got, you know, I'm reassigning the grayscale is what I'm doing. And I think it'll be a lot easier to see what we're doing if we plug that into the color. Let's plug that into the color, at least for now. Because we can lay it on top of the normal information and, and we'll be able to see when we're coming up on the edge. So I want to get rid of... Actually, this one, I'm going to bring it down this way. I'm going to bring it down to that spot there. Let's probably bring this up and it's not going to make much of a difference. It's, you know, it's how sharp I want that edge. So the closer these two are together, the crisper that edge is going to get. And then I can kind of do the same thing in the opposite direction. I'll bring it up to that edge. And I now have a mask that only handles those edges. Now, here's the cool part. We can close this. Because I've assigned it to grayscales, I haven't actually drawn this out. I haven't gone and like painted a white thing over the, this bevel the way it is. If I come back into this bevel node and I start to move this around, it's going to correspond because I've I haven't drawn a shape here so much as I've assigned each pixel of gray that comes from where, you know, whatever the input is, is going to be assigned a very, very specific color. So this way, when you create procedural materials and people start moving things around, that bevel, for example, is going to stay where you want it no matter where the end user puts it. And this we can now use as a mask to either mask stuff out or put stuff on top of it, right? There are, you know, there's, in the next, in the next segment, we're going to take a look at another way of uh, making masks off of this, but that's it for gradient map. So this is why I love gradient map, because you can do so much with them and they're just so useful. And if you're using it as a mask, for example, right now we've got, let's unplug that from the color. Uh, remember, you know, sometimes you want to blend things, uh, you know, they, they need to match. So if we're, if we're using this as a mask, we, we can't really do that. But I can come down into the specific parameters of this gradient map. And if I'm really only going to be using it as a grayscale, I can switch its actual color mode. So I can turn it into a mask very easily. And that's that. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at how to do uh, masks using leveled nodes.